Today we are talking with the project team leading a statewide evaluation identifying the strategies deployed and or planned in response to current and projected sea level rise across California. This team is working closely with the Ocean Protection Council and the Office of Planning and Research in hopes of aligning and potentially merging the products from this work with the state's adaptation clearinghouse, which is managed by OPR. Let's jump right in. I'm Charles Lester. I'm the director of the Ocean and Coastal Policy Center at UC Santa Barbara. And I'm the principal investigator of a research project funded by OPC uh, to look at coastal adaptation planning for sea level rise along California's coast. I'm Caitlin Manley, and I'm a graduate student researcher at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and a master's student at the Brent School of Environmental Science and Management. So the goal of the project is to evaluate the status and trends of sea level rise adaptation uh, processes and outcomes throughout all 76 coastal jurisdictions in California. We're facing huge changes, climate changes, including sea level rise, which is being driven by that climate change. So, you know, the challenge for California is how are we going to adapt to these changes that are baked in. It doesn't matter if we stopped emitting today, it's going to happen, a certain amount of sea level rise. So the challenge is how do we prepare for that and how do we make sure that we can continue to provide the uh, tremendous resources that everybody knows about in California but are inevitably going to be uh, vulnerable to this change. Through this project, we hope to really understand by looking at all of the different kinds of places and activities that have been happening, what is working better and what is not working as well so that we can improve that process going forward. Think about California's coast as uh, a laboratory of sorts with all of these locations that are really diverse. So if we can understand each of these places a little better, we might find little nuggets of wisdom about how to do a better job making decisions and you know, what kinds of public participation work or not what sorts of information is needed in order to make a better decision over the long run. What are the trade-offs? And that really is you know, what this project comes down to um, in the end, I think, and what this challenge is. It's about preparing our communities to make those really difficult trade-offs about what we care about and how to get the most along these different dimensions of the problem. And we, we, want to save our beaches, we want to protect development, we want to make sure people are safe. All of these things are important, but you can't have them all at the same time in the same place necessarily. So figuring out how to make those trade-offs is really the key. We're expecting to find that there's really no uniform process for sea level rise adaptation planning. Um, some of the coastal jurisdictions that we are observing might be well advanced within the planning process, while others might be just starting to play around with the idea of planning for sea level rise. We're also expecting to find that different jurisdictions and different communities will have different preferred methods of adapting to sea level rise. So some might want to accommodate for sea level rise, others might want to nourish their beaches and protect their shorelines a bit more, whereas other coastal communities might simply just want to retreat from the imposing threat altogether. It's preliminary, but I think one of the things we might find in this project is we don't spend enough time on that first step of clarifying our community values. It's going to be really important when we lay out these plans with pathways and different triggers for action that we keep that informed by our end goals. The sea level rise is a very real and eminent threat. And because of this, California policymakers are greatly valuing the opinions of community members that reside within the California coastal zone. And with that being said, I think it's really important for coastal residents to become involved with the sea level rise adaptation planning process. Everybody in the state has an interest in protecting our beaches. The beaches of Santa Cruz or the beaches of Santa Barbara are things that everybody can enjoy. But there are also inherently local interests and those aren't bad necessarily, they're just different interests and things that are also important. But sometimes these two interests clash because in order to save a beach, you may not want to build a seawall to protect the local piece of property, right? Uh, but if you want to save the property, you may need to do something that doesn't uh, really fulfill the larger public interest. How do we plan for the long term uh, but take meaningful actions today, right? And how do we take those actions today in such a way as to not prejudice or, or ruin the future for 
you know, our kids and our kids' kids. By being involved and understanding and educating yourselves on the measures and policies that are currently being enacted in your state, you will be helping us get a little bit closer to creating and establishing an equitable California coastline. I hope we don't fall into reactionary status quo where we just end up doing what we always do, emergency response without forethought, uh, but rather take some bold steps and planning actions to try to adapt in ways that might be a good bet. I look forward to learning more about how prepared California is statewide for sea level rise and how we can improve planning and project implementation locally to best reflect the values of all Californians. With that, I'm Kat Behesji, California Sea Grant State Fellow with Ocean Protection Council, signing off until next time, and as always, thank you for watching.